sparkling some today and I, 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 fish were just swimming all around me. It was just beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, I know that we're getting into our webinar here and it's just, it is, we're always having these conversations. I believe uh, last Thursday, um, I was doing the, uh, the training from my home in Orlando and the uh, Thursday before that I was doing the training from Seoul, Korea. So we've been, uh, we're, we're always somewhere. And then I think I was, I was in always. Mexico the week before. So, right, right. That's what's great about this. You can be wherever and still I love go. network marketing. Don't you? Absolutely. And I'm excited about today's, uh, today's webinar, the webcast with the sustained prosperity system, because I can tell you, we are going to talk today about some very, very exciting subjects uh, around the consistency concept of, of the sustained prosperity system. And that's, that's extremely important. And it's always good to have you on the call here, Mario. I know we're recording the call. Those of you who are, are joining in with us, we, we welcome you to the sustained prosperity training webcast, the broadcast that we're doing right now. It's, it's open to anyone in any company. We're not talking about products. We're not talking about any company. We're not talking about any specific company or products, period. This is a safety zone. You can bring your leaders to this call so that they can learn all the, all the secrets, all the wisdom of network marketing from people who have been in network marketing for many years. I've been network marketing for so many years, I can't even count anymore. And Mario has as well. He, he was corporate for 20 years before he finally moved over to the field where we are in the uh, profession side instead of the industry side. So it's always good to have Mario here on our, on our, on our court playing on our side, doing what he does best, and that is building relationships, meeting with people, helping people to ch achieve their dreams. And uh, that's what this, this type of business is all about. First thing I want to do is, and, and I may have mentioned this before in, in, a, in a past series, but I'm just, I'm just going to say this as we start the call out, Mario, and I'm going to drill everyone's mind here for just a moment. <clears throat> One of the greatest things about network marketing is that we are helping people build their dreams. So many people in this world, once they have reached a certain age or a certain time in their life, they quit dreaming. They just quit dreaming. Isn't that amazing how they quit dreaming? And I believe I mentioned this in one of our, our times that we were speaking down in, down in Mexico, I think in Guadalajara or somewhere. People quit dreaming. They just stop. But can you all remember, those of you who are listening today, can you remember when you were a small child? Can you remember watching cartoons? Or can you remember watching some type of movie or, or reading a comic book or whatever it was? Can you remember your superhero? Can you remember, remember what you dreamed about? Did you dream about being Superman or Batman? Or did you dream about being Spider-Man? Or did you dream about maybe being the president of the United States, or maybe you dreamed about being a doctor or an attorney or a fireman or a policeman. Everyone had their own dreams as they were, as they were growing up. What happened to those dreams? I'll tell you what happens to those dreams. They get crushed and it starts programming your subconscious mind not to want to dream outside the box of which you've been programmed within. Everyone lives in a box of mirrors. They see the reflection of the world within the reflection of themselves. It's, you've heard the old story, or, or the old phrase, you can't see the forest for the trees. That's what, the way most people live their lives. They can't. They're programmed to see the world a certain way. If they see the world positively, it's because they've been programmed to think positively. But in this world that we're in, if you look at the media that we see, if you look at the memes that are out there, if you look at the different things that are happening on social media, whatever it may be, you're constantly being fed with negative lifestyles. Look at the way people live. Facebook is one of the greatest ways to see how that people are truly not responding positively to the world. Why? because they're fed with so much negative content and information. Remember, your mind is a computer, and whatever it's fed, what goes in is programming you to be able to think a certain way. So let's look at your dreams. When you were a child, you dreamed about being a superhero. 
You dreamed about being a president. You dreamed about being some spectacular hero in some way. What happened? Well, eventually you found out that the Easter Bunny was not real, or you eventually found out who Santa Claus was. You eventually found out who the fairy godmother was or the tooth fairy was. You constantly were being fed with all these fictional characters that you were taught about, that you were talked to about by your parents. Eventually you found out that they weren't real. Everything that you thought that was real slowly became not real. Therefore, everything that you dreamed about, all these wonderful things that you dreamed about, they became unreal. You quit dreaming. Now, I never will forget years ago, I was driving down the highway and I had a sports car when I was really young and I was a senior in high school and I'm driving down the highway and I'm going down the, the, the freeway, the expressway. And I never will forget, I'm driving down the highway in this nice, beautiful sports car because I worked hard to get there. I was a dreamer. I was that dreamer. I wanted to be the dreamer. I never stopped dreaming, but I never will forget this moment. I'm driving down the highway and all of a sudden here this guy comes by in his vehicle, his station wagon style vehicle, and he's driving. His wife's in the car and the dog and the two kids are in the back seat and his two kids were glued to the window on the side facing my car, looking at my car and they're just like, oh, look at this car. You can see it in their eyes. You can see it in their minds. And you know what they were doing? They were thinking, I want a car like that when I get that age. I want a car like that when I grow up. Well, guess what? I bet the father that was sitting in the driver's seat was thinking the same thing when he was a child in the back seat, right? Looking at someone else's car. He said, I'm going to get that car. What happened? Well, a lot of times people's dreams get broken. Their dreamer mode is destroyed. They don't get to that point because something happened. Life happened. Responsibility fell onto their shoulders and maybe they had decisions they had to make to put their feet on solid ground and they didn't actually have in their mind to take any chances anymore to get to that next level. They found their comfort zone and they quit dreaming. You see, when you're a dreamer, you're not in a comfort zone. When you're a dreamer, you're in the dream zone. You're in that let's shoot for the moon zone. You think any astronaut got into a space shuttle or a rocket and thought, well, this is the safety zone. No, but they wanted to shoot for the stars. They wanted to shoot for space. They wanted to take that chance and they want to do everything they could to build their dream. And that's what they did. When they buckled themselves in that seat, they said, okay, this is not necessarily the safety zone, but it's okay. I'm living my dream. Let me tell you, folks, you really can't get to where you need to be if you're playing the safety zone. You can't get to where you need to be by having your mind set on, I'm afraid I'm going to fail. I'm afraid I'm going to fall on my face. I'm afraid I'm not going to be my best. You don't have to be the best. You just have to be your best. If you will just be your best and be the best you, you will be amazed at what you will be able to accomplish just in a few short years. Now, the one of the subject we'll talk about on this dreaming, think about this, dreaming, building your dreams. We're helping people build their dreams. I've been on more beaches all over the world, been in 60 plus countries. I've been able to see things that I never thought I'd ever be able to see. And I grew up on a chicken farm in North Georgia. How could that have happened? It happened for only one reason, because I care about people and I want to help them build their dreams. And because I help them build their dreams, it helps me build my dreams. That's the beauty of the network marketing industry and the profession. We are in a profession that the more that you help others, the more it helps yourself. 
Most other businesses, it's totally opposite from that. You have to compete with people in a corporate world to get to the top of the ladder. In our world, in network marketing, you don't compete with people in your organization. You help them. And the more you help them, the more it lifts your dream. The more you help build their dreams, the more it builds your dreams. Now, I have a subject that I want to embed into your minds today, that I want to cause you to dream. I want to cause you to grasp hold of living your dream. Just like when I was talking about, do you remember when you used to dream about being Superman? Do you, do you remember when you used to dream about being Spider-Man or the president or, the, or, or a policeman or, or a fireman? Do you remember dreaming about being a hero? At that very moment when I'm saying that, there's that little glimpse, that little glimpse in your mind that says, yeah, I remember. I want you to grasp hold of that right now. I want you to hold on to that thought. And I want you to start dreaming again as I'm about to take you into our next stage of this training. I want you to listen to this. Consistency is built upon organizational skills. Consistency is built upon doing certain behaviors over and over and over until they become natural. You'll never learn how to fly until you have consistently jumped to that next level. You will learn how to dream your business to the top. Listen to this. Love this today. I'm, I'm excited about this message because if you don't get anything else, I want you to get the message that we're giving to you tonight. Now, I put out a blog the other day, and I want to share that with you because that's totally what this message is about. There's a difference between not wanting to fail and wanting to win. Most people build their business, and they go through every day fighting not to fail. It's a fight for them. It's a struggle. <clears throat> Are you living your business dream world in a mindset of, I don't want to fail. I can't fail today. I'm not going to fail today. I need to focus on not failing. Let me give you an example. Some of you are walking up on a stage and you're about to give a presentation about your product or presentation about your compensation plan or your company. And before you get on that stage, Probably one of the most scariest things that most people ever do is to speak. Absolutely. It's a very scary thing for most people. Well, listen to this. As you're coming out on stage, that fear mode, I'm going to share with you how to cancel it. And you need to use this same mentality psychologically with everything you do in business. Instead of walking out on stage afraid that you're going to fail and you're not and your focus is on I'm walking out on stage and I'm focused on not failing that's not what you need to do because if you do this your rate of failure is going to be higher because you're focused on failure you're not focused where it needs to be you're focused on not failing. You're not focused on success. You're not focused on the speech. You're not focused on the presentation. You're not focused on what you need to be doing. You're focused on what you don't need to be doing. So your mentality needs to be focused clearly opposite from that. Instead of walking into your day, instead of walking out on stage, instead of focused on not failing, I want you to start learning how, before you walk out there, speak to your mind, speak to yourself, concentrate, focus on the presentation. Don't focus on your nervousness. Don't focus on your, your fears. Don't focus on the things that you're afraid that you're going to forget. Don't, it doesn't matter if you forget something. The audience doesn't know it. It doesn't matter if you don't get it perfect. The audience doesn't know it, but they will notice if you walk out there on the stage with a nervousness of worry and fret about failing. That's what they will notice. And when people are joining your business, they need to feel security. And if you walk out there giving that presentation, 
with a fear of failure, you're not giving that audience that sense of security so that they can join your business with a security behind that signature. That's not what you're giving them. You're giving them fear. Let me give you an example. If you're playing golf and you're lining up on that ball and you're ready to take that swing, if you're so afraid you're going to hit that ball wrong, you're, you're going to hit the ball wrong. There's a chance that you may hit it right, but most of the time you're going to hit it wrong because your mind is on what you shouldn't be doing instead of what you should be doing. When you walk up to that ball with confidence and you have your stance just exactly right and your swing is confident and smooth, you're going to have a higher rate of the ball going straight and true and right where it needs to go down that fairway. That's confidence. If you're a runner and you're in a race and your focus is on your competition running beside you or running up behind you or running in front of you and your focus is not on you just trying to run the fastest you can and get to that finish line, then you're not going to win. Your focus does not need to be on your competition. Your focus does not need to be on others running against you. Your focus needs to be on you finishing your race well. That's the mindset of a prosperity mindset. And this is a powerful message as we go into the rest of our call tonight. And that's why it's very important for you to understand the reasoning behind everything that we're talking about. Now, I'm going to uh, talk to Mario. Mario, if you could bring yourself back into the picture here tonight. And, yeah. uh, and I'm going to bring Tony into the picture here as well. And I want you to introduce our, our guest tonight because I'm excited about our guest. I'm extremely excited because I know that one, one thing about Tony Canali is he has a reputation of trying to help people, work with people, He's done so many things. He even has had a radio broadcast for years trying to help people win in the network marketing arena. And um, I really appreciate you, Mario, and all the things that you have done in your lifetime and your skill sets that you've done on the corporate level working with top leaders in different companies. Before we bring Tony on, I want to ask you a question, Mario. The things we just talked about here, have you noticed that when people join a company in network marketing, how they're so excited, they're almost living in a euphoric box of, of excitement, and it's, it's like they've walked into a dream again. They've learned how to dream again. It's like, wow, this is so awesome. It's like someone who has never owned their own business, and all of a sudden they open up their first fudge shop on the corner they're excited because now someone's going to be able to eat their fudge or the first time they've been able to open up a flower shop or or a, a, a restaurant or a, a, a maybe a boutique or whatever it is and they're excited about that ribbon cutting ceremony when they're able to share with everyone i'm open for business these people understand what building their dream is all about living their dream it's all about that excitement. I've done something. I'm doing something. I'm moving forward with life. Can you give me kind of an example of some people over the years or some things that you've run into on the corporate side as you've worked with people? Have you seen this? Well, I, I think I see it every single day, whether it be on the corporate side or now that I'm doing the business. I see it all the time when someone gets started. You know, they're, they're a little unsure, but they're super excited, right? And so they need the tools. They need the support to have success, you know, and I think if they focus on that success that you're talking about, because they'll always have obstacles, you know, the next day something might come up, but if they continue forward and us as leaders help them with that excitement, the excitement is a huge part of it, you know, and I think they will definitely have success. Now I'm excited about tonight's call, Jeff. I've been communicating with Tony. He's having uh, some issues with his video, so I don't know if we'll be able to see him tonight or not. Uh, but let's see if we can hear Tony, if we can unmute Tony and see if we're able to hear some audio. Tony, are you with Hi, us? Hi, Tony. Okay, oh, guys. Can you hear me? We can. Thank awesome. you for joining us. T Tony, we're super excited to have you on the call tonight, and we're sorry we can't see you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're in for a special treat tonight. You're going to want to take plenty of notes. 
I'm just uh, meeting Tony and reading everything that he's done over 25 years full time in the direct sales industry. His networks are responsible for hundreds of millions of dollars in sales. So definitely a lot to learn from him tonight. Jeff, he also has experience, as you probably know, on both sides as an executive VP and also working the business. Uh, he also runs her home based radio network, which has grown, listen to this, over 1 million listeners in over 100 company, uh, 100 countries. And so definitely a lot to be learned tonight. And Tony, we appreciate you. There's many more things to say about you, but we'll go ahead and, and give you the time. Well, thanks for having me on the show. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. I, yes. I lost my voice yesterday. This doesn't happen very often. My wife said, boy, what a break it's been. And so uh, anyway, sorry about the technical difficulties here, but I, I hope you guys can hear me okay. And Jeff, I've been watching, you know, the, the what you've been doing here the last several months and done a great job at uh, bringing on some amazing people and just a fantastic format. And I'm just really blessed and grateful that you've asked me to come on the show and I'd be glad to share anything I can to help anybody I can here. Well, it was such a pleasure to have you have you on the call, Tony. And uh, you, I'm sure you heard the first part of our our, our message tonight and, and you and I talked before the, the webinar. So we're on the same track and we're on the same page. And Tony, building dreams. We're talking about building dreams tonight. We're talking about the difference between a mindset of saying, I don't want to lose. I don't want to fail. And on the contrast, a mindset that is focused on winning. You know, there's a big difference between a mindset that is focused on winning and a mindset that is focused on, I don't want to fail, isn't there? There really is, Jeff. Uh, you know, one of the things that I, I did for a number of years uh, as an advocate in the direct selling space was I was the vice president for the MLMIA, the oldest not-for-profit trade group in direct selling. And every time I would do one of our teleclasses, I would always end it with, you know, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. I always loved that statement. And what I always felt was important, and I really wish we had this in our school system, is imagine, Jeff and Mario, if a child, even an elementary school student, for instance, was taught that what they think about is power, what they think about will come about, what they focus on they'll get, either good or bad. Imagine if people actually thought that way. And the difference between the people that you've had on these webinars over the months and the average person truly is all in how they think. That's it. Nothing else. Really, it's all in their attitude. It's all in how they think. It's all in how they perceive life and people. And so what you focus on is absolutely true. You will have a tendency to get what you focus on. If you put emotion behind it and passion behind it, you'll be driven towards that good or bad. And so they always say, be careful of what you ask for, Jeff, because you might get it. So what you're talking about tonight is absolutely so critical at the success of in, in direct, it's in life, but in direct selling, it's everything. It sure is. Mindset, attitude is extremely important. And it, it's also important to understand another side. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be blunt. I'm always blunt on our calls that we have. So I'm going to be blunt. I like positive people around me. If I have a complainer around me, if I have someone that's constantly pessimistic, that's constantly negative, that they're constantly complaining and they're constantly making excuses and they're constantly just, oh, they're just, they're an atmosphere that just sucks the oxygen right out of the room. And we all know those types of people. And we want to help them. We want to do everything we possibly can for them. And these webinars are a good place to send people because they're going to get good, positive, solid information, and we're going to be blunt and tell everybody exactly like it is. Tony, we as leaders have learned to filter negative behaviors, or we learn to fail. That's exactly what it's all about. If you don't filter negative behaviors, if you don't filter negative impact, you are destined to give in to it. You're destined to allow yourself to be impacted by it. So in your experience, what do you do if you have a negative transponder? 
someone that's in your organization that absolutely every time you talk to them, it's like you feel bad after you get off the phone with them. You feel bad after you've been in their presence. You feel like, wow, all the joy just went out of, out of the room. What, how do you deal with someone like that? What's your, what's your first and second angle with them? Well, you know, you're talking about something. You, you're kind of asking me a question. I don't know if I should answer it or not. <laughs> because quite frankly, you know, the, what you just talked about, you know, there's, you can teach people how to do this business. 80% is attitude, 80% is mindset, 80% is your music, how you feel about life, how you feel about yourself, how you feel about people. The 20%, you know, how to do the business, how to do a presentation, how to prospect, how to follow up, how to follow through, how to invite, how to set goals. Now you can teach that to anybody, right? But right. when it comes down to how somebody perceives life, that's a major overhaul, Jeff. And when I'm talking, when I know you have a psychology background and you understand exactly what I'm saying right now, you, I wish you could see my face because I'm laughing. But the reality is, is that when, and I'll just say it the way it is, when I've had people that are like that, I, I love them. So I tell them the truth. And I say, listen, John, you have bad harmony. You do not, you're, you're, the way that you're viewing the world is affecting how people view you. And if you don't change it, you're going to have a lousy life for the rest of your life, and you're never going to be successful in a business like this. And then I point out solutions and resources. When I was first building my organization many, many, many years ago, I used to sit down with new people on a 48-hour follow-up, Jeff and Mario, and I would sit down with a Nightingale Conant catalog. And I would say, okay, Jeff, what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? And I would try to figure those out. And we would do it together. And then I would point out what audio solutions or video solutions that they could purchase and seminars they could go to. And I would teach them how to change their thinking because I knew that if they could change the way they thought, if they could change the way they thought every day, that eventually what was in the inside would come out on the outside and we would reflect that on the outside. And you know what? Sure enough, if they had the strong enough desire, Jeff, they would do that. If they didn't, though, they wouldn't. So I just tell them the truth in answer to your question. I tell them the truth. I say, listen, your attitude's terrible. You're not going to be able to attract quality people. You're not going to be able to maintain relationships. You're not going to be able to find people that will follow you. This is a business of relationships, period, end of discussion. And without a good attitude, you're destined to fail. And that's the truth. It's a hardcore, sad truth. But isn't it the truth? Absolutely. It certainly is. Now, you know, when you have someone with a kind of an attitude like that, and I've done a lot of things in my lifetime outside of network marketing, even in political, political events and political boards and things around my county, and I've just noticed certain things. And, and let me just give you an example. I'm just going to give you an example. If you're a politician, this, this will apply to some of you, and this is going to be some good wisdom for some of you strong leaders, because some of the advice that we give is not just for some of you newbies. It's some of you strong leaders. You also need to listen to this. You're gaining some wisdom from people who have been around the world with network marketing and have seen everything you can imagine. I want you to listen to this. We're talking about if you have someone who has that mentality that just rubs you the wrong way rubs your fur backwards. It's, it's, it's like sandpaper sometimes. And Tony, you just mentioned that, okay, this is how you deal with them. If they don't comply, if they don't jump out of that box, you still need to understand how to deal with them, right? So I'm going to give an example here and I want to see if you agree with it. If I was a politician and I had someone that was in the county that I lived in that was constantly badgering me, Constantly being negative, talking about things and saying things and, and working against the progress of a certain thing. Let's say it has to do with the development authority or it has to do with uh, the planning commission or the, the commission board or whatever it may be within the county. And that person just keeps stirring up trouble. They keep making negative comments. I found out through years of experience politically that politicians can be artists at placing that person on a board within the county 
and placing them within responsibility where they hear the ins and outs. They hear the, the reality that's going on. They hear all the things that are happening, and it places them within a responsibility role to actually help fix the problem that they're complaining about. Sometimes this can also happen in network marketing. I found that when you have someone that is absolutely negative about certain things, sometimes it's good to place them maybe in a committee, and I'm, I'm not saying there's a, there is a committee there, but I'm just saying sometimes it's good to place them in a position where you're uh, going to announce a, a new program. It has to do with a training program. It has to do with a seminar that you're about to do. And then maybe that seminar is on positive thinking. It's on positive uh, uh, behaviors and, and attitude and training and, and, and good mentorship and so on and so on. And during that planning time, and you place them within that, sometimes it will absolutely turn a person around and turn them into a guru of the good behaviors and the good attitudes compared to where they were before because they're embedded into actually helping make it happen. I found that some of the people who do the most complaining and are the most negative are some of the most talented people that you have in your organization. I think that's what we miss sometimes is the artwork of turning that around. And that's where I've seen you be positive over the years. I've seen your attitude come out as strong and dynamic and it's contagious. And that's one of the things that these people on this call is hearing right now. And so Tony, give me that angle. Can, can you place that within a role of wisdom for us? Well, you know, it's, it's funny you say that because you know, when you do put somebody in a role of responsibility like that, Jeff, now it becomes it becomes really personal for that person, and they want to do a good job. They get serious. It's like when you join, when you become a distributor in network marketing, you're not when you until you're you're not really in until you sponsor somebody. Then you have a responsibility. So when you're all of a sudden in a position like that, now you have a responsibility, and so you start to be become what you're trying to teach and what you're trying to help with. And then you see behaviors in people that you in yourself don't like, but are starting to face, right? And you start to look in that mirror and you go, whoa. And so all of a sudden that happens and then they get around people like you and Mario and that modeling effect kicks in because now all of a sudden one of the best ways I've found to deal with people like that is love them anyway. Try to be honest with them, like I said, when you you know, because you have a responsibility to help them and obviously take help them bring, remove obstacles or limiting beliefs that will sabotage their business. But at the same time, model the behavior that you want that person to be. If you want to, if you if you're teaching integrity, then live with integrity. If you're teaching positive attitude, then live with a positive attitude. If you're teaching action, teach by doing action. And those are areas that just by modeling that behavior, just by emulating it, by being a good role model, people will start to, if they resonate with you, Jeff, as you know, they'll start to move in the direction of your behavior and attitude. They'll start to become you. How many times over the years did you have people that would leave messages on their answering machine and you'd listen to it and it was basically the way you leave yours? I mean, people would come dressed the same way I would dress for the meeting sometimes. You ever had that happen? I mean, well, I mean, you have thousands of times. I mean, it happens, right? So people really do pay attention to you, and that's why if you want to change people, change you first. Be you know, an example. The, one of the beautiful things that happens on these calls, and I'm getting reactions from people's emails and their texts and their messages coming back to me after these calls, I'm seeing a cognitive restructuring going on. It's almost like a computer. You know, you got files, and that's the way your brain is. They're just files, files, files. And some of the files you don't need because they're, they're, they're contaminated. <laughs> you know, they're just totally contaminated. We have contaminated files in our minds, and it may be contaminated because of maybe some music we listen to or maybe a show we've seen on TV or what have you, or it may just be because we've been impacted by certain things in our past where we have damaged, contaminated files that have viruses, right? You know, and when you go to your computer, you, you click on that virus control and you clean up your viruses. I have Apple now, so I don't have to do that, but <laughs> I had to do it for many years. But remember how we used to have to clean up the files and get rid of the viruses and get rid of the contaminated files. And then we defragged and we 
moved everything to a good space and now we had more space, you know, to be able to build on. I think one of the things that's happening here in our calls is we're defragging. We're actually causing people to think better. We're causing people to be happier. We're causing people to be have more joy in their process of building their organization because they're building with confidence, they're building with skills, they're building with things that they know that will work. We've been training them on systems. They don't have to depend on their own ability, but they can depend on something that has been proven. This is, in my opinion, a great move in a right direction. And one of the first webcasts we had was a quote from Jim Rohn about attitude. And um, I have to say, I have some of the best friends in network marketing, top leaders from so many different companies all over this profession. And one common denominator stands out. Great attitudes, positive outlook. That outlook that says life is good, come join us. If there's ever been a product that we can sell better than anything else, it's a good attitude. If we can sell a good attitude, people will join us if we were selling cardboard. That's exactly the way it looks. You know, so Tony, I'm going to pull from you here because I, I really want to pull from you strongly. Give me your take on, on attitude at its best and how that you can build confidence as a level of security and it causes people to have a better attitude because they're not under pressure. They're not under stress because they actually know what they're doing. If they're following a system, that's a proven system. They're not out there winging it and putting stress on their life because they're not experimenting on everyone around them. That's their people that they love is who they recruited. Right. And they're not taking a chance. They're doing things that they know works because we're training them. Right. That level of confidence rises and the attitude is great. So it's not enough just to give out information. We must also create a culture, a culture of strength and happiness and confidence, security, the way that people can feel good being where they are. Give us your strength there, man. Give us everything you've got. <laughs> you know that's where you're at. That's where, that's the way you think. And that's why you're on this call. Well, you know, I didn't always think that way. I, you know, you said some things there that are really profound, Jeff. When you explain the way that we defrag and the way that we clean up files and the way that we'd eliminate some of the old, you know, unbroken programs, right, that were sitting somewhere on some file, and then all of a sudden, wow, the computer's working better. What happened? Well, it's duh. And, you know, you talk about that and how it relates to our brains. But think about something now. Some people go, well, you're talking about brainwashing, Jeff. Well, you know, I've had people say that to me over the years. And it's like, you know what? Maybe your brain's freaking dirty. Maybe it needs to be washed. Maybe you need to clean it every now and then. I mean, you take a shower, you know, you brush your teeth, hopefully. You know, you do those things. Maybe you need to clean your freaking brain. And, you know, I mean, I say that gently, but it's really true because what, here's the challenge that we run into is that no one ever taught us when we were young that the, the people were around and their attitudes and the clergy and our parents and our brothers and our neighbors and the people that we grew up with could affect us, good or bad. No one ever taught us that. We didn't get a manual with that. No one ever taught us that we'd absorb the thought processes and belief systems. And what you're, what you're describing now it's really a matter of, it's it really BS. It's belief systems and the, limiting beliefs. And those those are two words that are very powerful, Jeff, as you know, and Mario, I mean, these are very powerful in our arsenal here in network marketing. And people have limiting beliefs, and they never realize that they could reprogram their brain. They never realize that they could literally wash their brain and clean it of the junk and defrag those files and get rid of the freaking garbage. And they never realize that. And I mean, I say this, I swear to God, I say this with total 1,000% conviction. This is not a sales process. How do I know? I was one of those. I came out of a dysfunctional family. I love what Tony Robbins says. Well, find me a functional one. 
very few people have a functional family. So we're all programmed. We're programmed by the clergy. We're programmed by TV. We're programmed by our negative relatives. Why did Napoleon Hill, after 20 years studying successful billionaires, and, you know, the early part of the century, Jeff, why did he say the number one reason why people fail is because they listen to their friends, family, and freaking neighbors? It's because their attitudes is what, what caused them to act and their actions got them the results and the results were either good or bad and so if you had a jeff olson or a jeff welch or you had a mark urinell when god rest his soul i wish he was still around today or you had an oil woodward and you hung around with these people you're going to start to become like them think like them and behave and act like them your results will become like them and that's the reality of it so what we're talking about people want to know how do you do this business what do you do and how do i put them in this three things we do in this business we put them in we keep them in and we move them along and but you know what no one ever figures out how to stick around long enough how to get a good enough attitude to find the quality people to put them in never mind keep them in and move them along and then they won't stay in long enough if you don't get them solidly grounded and really this is everything and their belief system is important what they believe in as far as the company they're involved in the leadership that they're working with the industry as a whole how do they feel about it is it they feel it's yeah, mostly one of those things it's kind of a scam but you know I may make some money or do you feel like hey this is the last bash in the free freaking enterprise there is that the average person can take advantage of how do you feel about you do you feel like you want to be sponsored by you one of the biggest things you can do is look in the mirror and say well I want to be sponsored by me and if you say no you need to go back and work on you. And every great leader you talked about, every great leader you've had, whether it be a Jordan Adler, a Margie Alaprandi, or Owen Woodward, or a Tom Chenault, or you name the people you've had on some unbelievable people. Unbelievable freaking people. Entirely freaking. You know, unbelievable people you've had on these shows, they all do, exactly as you said. They have a great attitude. It's contagious. And you can. Here's the good news. If you get anything from this tonight, just get one thing. Just remember this. It's not just for Jeff Welch. It's not just for Tony Cannoli. It's not just for Jordan Adler or whoever. If you can change this in you. You have the power to change. You have the power to create better associations. You have the power to disassociate with people that are negative. You have the power to limit those associations. You have the power to coach and learn from people even at a distance by like what Jeff is doing tonight, which is such a tremendous value. I wish, I wish you guys knew how much value this really is. Thank you, Tony. I, I want to bring up something here that Tony is, is hitting on. And we're staying on this mindset, this lack of computer. Now, when you have contaminated files, Tony, when people have contaminated files on their computer, what happens? Well, when you're trying to get access to what you're doing, there's constant pop-ups that you didn't expect. There are constant windows that are opening that are attached to these contaminated files, these viruses in your mind and these viruses in the thought process that you have. And it's distracting people from what they should be focused on. People are distracted from what they need to be focused on because their mindset is carrying around so much baggage around them. And one of the things that we teach is how to manage your thinking, how to manage a powerful empowerment within your mindset instead of allowing all these contaminated files to have these pop-ups when you clean your file system, when you truly go through this process of learning how to think correctly, you're compressing these files. You're in eliminating these, these distractions. You're eliminating the pop-ups. Just like Tony said, once you have defragged, your computer runs smoother, faster. It gets you to where you're going. It puts you in the fast lane of information in the fast lane of progress. Now, I think some of the, the greatest things that are a distraction to people in network marketing is just, well, several things. Number one, I think that the impact that people have on their lives, just like you were saying, Tony, am I the best sponsor? Would I want someone to be sponsoring me that is me? 
Would I want to be my own sponsor? Would I want me as a sponsor? If I wanted me as a sponsor, I have to look at that myself. I, I, you, you're causing me to think. I'm going to look at myself in the mirror and I'm going to say, would I want Jeff Welch as my sponsor? Would I really want that guy that's so mixed up sometimes? Would I really want that guy that, that would I want Jeff Welch as my sponsor? You're causing me to think, Tony. You're causing me, my brain to open up now. And uh, because I honestly look at, I, I, I'm, I'm the hardest critic on my own self. I want to be really good at everything. I used to fight karate years ago. I fought professional karate. And when I found out that I couldn't be number one, I decided to go to another another angle and do something different. I taught karate in, in many different universities, and, and, and I really had a great time doing it. But I realized at a point I couldn't be number one, and that that beat my head up. I mean, I really said, okay, I can't be number one. I fought the world championship back in 1981, and I couldn't get but so far up, and I didn't make it to number one. But who are you? that's listening on this call. Is Tony communicating with you? Is, did he hit a, a note? Did he hit a sore spot when he said what he said a moment ago? Would you want you for a sponsor? Or would you feel, because of that question, that you need to do some fine tuning? Do you need to defrag? Do you need to clean up your files? Do you need to clean up the way you think? Do you need to reprogram yourself and put better files, better memory, better development, better uploads, better thinking, better development inside of your mind? Because maybe you need to replace some negative with some positive, with powerful, with destructive. You see what I'm saying? Get rid of the destruction. Get rid of the distractions. Get rid of the pop-ups. Get rid of the viruses. Get rid of all these contaminated files and defrag and make space for some good stuff and use these trainings to build yourself to that next level. Now, Tony, some people in the United States, I'm just going to pick on us, especially English speaking countries, U S UK, Australia, New Zealand, the, the English speaking countries, Canada, I find that when I'm training all over the world, that if I'm training in countries that don't speak English, they listen, they take notes, they stay there longer, they focus, they don't play on their iPhones and their iPads, and you know, and they don't talk back and forth and leave the room to do this and that. And they're focused. When you talk to people and train people in an English-speaking market, one of the biggest things that I notice over and over and over is people are distracted. They don't focus on training like they need to. They don't listen. They don't take notes. And they're constantly playing around, multitasking, instead of actually focusing on what needs to be done. Does this aggravate you? Do you see this? Or am I the only one that sees this? And if you are seeing this, what advice could you give us? Because I don't see this in the Asian markets. I don't see this in the German markets. I don't see this in Hungary. I don't see this in Romania. I don't see this in Russia. I don't see this in Spain. I don't see this in Italy. I don't see this in Mexico. When I see these types of behaviors, I'm seeing it in mostly our English speaking markets. So can you give us your take on this? Well, you know, I'm probably not the right person to ask for this because I have a little different way. Sometimes I get a little hot sometimes, Jeff. I don't quite, uh, I haven't got full control over that yet. I'm, I'm working on it still, working on the construction. So when I see that, yeah, it pisses me off, quite frankly. <laughs> I mean, it just bothers me when I see that. You see people, like, I want this so bad because, you know, you need three things. You need desire, you need coachability, and then you need the work ethic to match it. And, you know, so I say to people, well, you tell me you want to get out of your job. You tell me you want a career. You tell me that you want to earn 10000 a month, 25000 a month, whatever it may be, but you're not even taking notes. You're not even paying attention to a guy that's been doing this for 10 years, 20 years, that is where you want to be in 10 times over and you're sitting there and you're playing on your iPhone, you're sending messages. You know, what I would do sometimes in meetings, Jeff, is I would throw things at people. I mean, I'd, I'd usually have things in my pocket, like little candies or whatever. And, I mean, I was known for someone getting one off the side of their head. You know, and usually they'd look over at me and I'd smile and wave, you know. But guess what they did? 
they paid attention. It was a called a pattern interrupt, and it worked. So, yeah, I talk to people about that. It is a problem. But what you're describing now is part of the skills that we, that's actually a skill that anybody can learn. And, you know, two words that people should write down, whoever's listening to watching this tonight, write down laser focus. Laser focus is incredibly important. And there's certain things that we do. There's only a handful of things that we do in this business that makes 80% of the, the difference. And those handful of things are revenue-producing activities. And if you laser focus on those activities, you can learn to do that. Now, when you first get involved, if you're a multitasker and you're one of those people that has a hard time focusing, you can easily, I shouldn't say easily, it just takes a little work. It's like working out. You can literally go down and work that muscle. You can start to get, you know, focus. Okay, I'm going to take 15 minutes I'm going to purposely put my blinders on and I'm not going to allow the noise in. I'm going to shut down the ringer. You know, I tell people take 15 to 20 minutes minimum or half an hour every day to read 10 pages of a good book. Listen to what you're like, what you're doing right now every single week. Go to a good, you know, go to a good webinar, seminar, and just constantly program and re energize and plug into positive powerful information Jeff yeah, but when you do it be present be in the moment when you're doing that and, and if you're not don't beat yourself up just get yourself back there again you can literally recreate a muscle you can literally get to the point I can get so laser focused it's scary but I, I had to learn to do that you know it's like lifting weights you know, you can learn how to get really intense when you're lifting that weight. Anybody can move it, you know, six, eight reps, up and down, and up and down. But not everybody can squeeze as they go up. They really squeeze as they go down. You follow me? You know, I mean, you can't see me right now, but you can hear what I'm experiencing is all the fibers in my being are contracting, right? You can take that kind of power, Jeff, as you know, especially being a former martial artist, and you can focus and focus is power acting on. And you can do that with 15, 20 minutes, half an hour. Laser focus, positive intention, focusing on revenue producing activities, focusing on the attitude and skills necessary. There's really a handful of things that we do here, Jeff. But everything that you're talking about, focus, laser focus, and consistency, which is what you started off with in the webinar today, is everything and i know that a lot of people want to know the secret sauce they want to know oh, how can i recruit more people they want to know but every, without everything that we're talking about you might as well just decide to stay working for somebody in my opinion exactly well tony it's been such a pleasure to have you on the sustained prosperity system training call this evening i just want you to know that and let, let's review this for just a moment let's re review this we talked about building our dream learning how to dream again. We talked about making sure a mindset was on winning and not, I don't want to lose. It's not about, I don't want to lose. It's about winning. It's about finding that place of, of knowing that you're going to cross that finish line and you're going to win today. That's your mindset. We talked about how to program our minds just like a computer. We need to, Defrag. We need to get rid of all those contaminated files and all those pops up, pop ups, and distractions, and and all those things. And Tony brought up a good point earlier in the call tonight, and that was really powerful when you said, "Would you want to be sponsored by you? Would you want to be sponsored by you, Mario?" That impacted me. And I believe that impacted everyone on this call. Actually, I think about that all the time as well. As I'm working with leaders, you know, in different countries and, and here in the U.S., I think about that. I think about if I'm doing enough, you know, and if I'm there for them, you know. So definitely that's something I think about all the time. And I think about you, Jeff, because, hey, after being a corporate executive for 20 years, you're responsible for me moving over and doing the business. So I do appreciate you and your you're an amazing business partner in, in Upline, so I appreciate that. Well, I want people on this call to gain. I really do. People on this call, many of them are in so many different companies, and once they hear the replay, and maybe they don't get on exactly while we're live, but they hear the replay later, and they're listening from so many different companies and so many different 
cultures from different places around the world. I mean, I've, I've, I've seen the list that are listening in tonight. They're, they're from several countries tonight. And the part that lays on my shoulders, and one thing that, that really touches my heart when I'm talking about network marketing, is I love this profession because it gives so much freedom. It brings people to a place where they're able to experience life at a different level. And um, if we can just help them see that dream, if we can just help them understand that if they can own their own business, they can work from home, uh, they don't have to fight rush hour traffic every day, they don't have to have a boss that's hovering over their shoulder once they reach a place where they can go full time in network marketing. They don't have to ask permission from someone else when are they going to take a vacation. They don't have to ask permission from someone else when they can be late for their job that morning. And, and they don't have to leave their child necessarily at the daycare and feel guilty about it if they are working from home full time. And, they, and they're able to be with every event and special moment that their family has because they have the freedom that network marketing gives someone. And it's not the typical freedom that you would see in a typical job or a typical career. It's a freedom to be there when you want to be. And, and I, I see this webinar for the Sustaining Prosperity System as an opportunity to help people succeed and to move up and to reach that level of confidence security, knowledge, wisdom that is shared from so many people from around the world and so many top leaders that we're bringing on as special guest and you, Mario, and me and people like Tony. Thank you, Tony, for being our special featured guest this evening on the Sustained Prosperity System. Oh, I appreciate you. I appreciate you having me on, Jeff. I really do. And Mario, you guys are doing phenomenal, phenomenal Thanks, work. Man. and. Love you guys for doing what you're doing and, and uh, have you have goodness in your heart and spirit and what you're doing is going to make a difference and will continue to make a difference. I appreciate the opportunity to, to be here. And I want to remind everybody listening, just remember, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you are right. So choose you can. Exactly. The power of our mind is amazing. It's an amazing thing. And I believe the people who are listening are actually capturing that. They're capturing the, the fact that the power of our mind is, is, is basically what takes you to the top. Uh, you're going to be able to uh, think so much clearer over the next few weeks, the next few months, as you start listening to these recordings over and over and over. And you can access these recordings on my YouTube channel, and we're going to send the recording tonight to you as well, those of you who are registered with the Sustained Prosperity System emails. You know, we don't bug you by sending you too many emails. We send you the right emails just with the right information. And, um, and this recording will be sent to you very shortly as well over the next two or three days. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Mario. Thank Thanks, you Jeff. all Thanks, for Tony. joining us tonight on the Sustained Prosperity System call. Mario. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Tony. And uh, as, as Jeff mentioned, we will send out the recording. This call is being recorded. There's a lot of great things that we learned from tonight. So make sure you're registered and please share that. Share that link with other people so they can also register. Uh, next week we will have another great speaker, Margie Alaprandi. So we're looking forward to have her. Actually, Margie is going to be busy next week and we have a reschedule for a different week. Next week, and I didn't tell Mario this and I just now sent Mario a text. <laughs> Mario, Mar Margie's rescheduled. Uh, Margie communicated with me, and she is uh, she's speaking at an event. Okay. And, um, and uh, she told me this two weeks ago, and I keep forgetting to tell you. But um, next week, next Thursday night, uh, I'm going to be training extensively for that hour. And, um, and I'm going to be going over some major details with the Sustained Prosperity System for some of you that have not been able to capture the gist of the uh, sustained prosperity system. We're going to go into some depths. We're going to go into some uh, some heavy intel when it comes to what we call the sustained prosperity system and how it works, how it duplicates, how that you can create the right behaviors to get that next level. I'm going to give you some rudiments, some elementary sides of it, but I'm also going to give you some more comprehensive sides of it as well next week. So next week, I'm your featured special Perfect. guest. And uh, Mario, you're going to be interjecting and, 
and uh, obviously uh, pulling from me if you have questions that you feel like we're not covering. And uh, so next week's going to be, I'm, I'm on the spot. So Tony, <laughs> I'm next week and you were on, on this week. And, uh, and uh, so I'm the one that's under pressure. All right. Well, we're, we're looking forward to that as well to learn more from the system and we will reschedule Margie then. And like I said, this call is being recorded. Thank you so much for joining us. Want to thank Tony once again for being on the call with us this evening and also Jeff from joining us all the way from the Keys out there in Florida. So thank you both. And thank you all for joining us from wherever you're at. And we have several people from the U.S. and also Latin America and Asia. So we appreciate you. Please share the word with other people. Have a good night. Thank you all. Thank you all. Good night, guys. Thanks. God bless you all. God bless. Good night.